starting on this moment of, of this section of the drawing, it is ostensibly a second stage, right? Like I refer to things a lot as, as being a part of this stage or that stage. Uh, we're in the value development stage. We're in the refining the drawing stage. Um, I think really the only one of those that truly exists really is the block-in stage. There can be a lot of things that go into the block-in stage and a lot of variation in terms of how the block-in can exist. But these stages are kind of a, I would refer to them as like a useful illusion, right? Eventually, as you go on to being kind of practicing artists and you're, you're working in your own studio, you're not following necessarily assignments. Uh, and I say this because I know from my own experience transitioning between being a student and, and uh, just being a, a professional artist out there in the world, that your stages, the lines in between them are really going to blur, right? You're going to compress certain things. You're going you're gonna to switch the order of how you do other things. Um, you know, all sorts of variation is kind of possible after that. These, this idea that, that, that now we're in the value development stage is only practical in terms of communicating a process, right? So that's why all these examples are kind of split up into stages. Other than that, the, the idea of stages is a little bit illusory, right? It's not, it's not necessarily true, um, but for students, it's, it's highly practical. So we're separating the world into that shadow and light. The shadow is becoming dark enough, and you're starting to also see maybe the tools that I'm using in this moment are maybe going to be a little bit different. You're starting to see the black Rotoring 2.0 lead holder, uh, which I use to carry my 4B lead. So a lot of the values that I'm developing in this moment, I'm developing them with softer leads in order to get a kind of darker effect that's going to push this need for kind of darker halftones further and further. Now... Why wouldn't I just take my 4B, key all my shadows as dark as I need to go, and then just spend the time rendering my lights? Now, the reason I don't do this is that a process like that presupposes a perfect accuracy at this stage. Right now, I, I actually am quite aware that there's still several things to move and tweak inside the drawing to achieve a sense of accuracy. And so for me, I, I wouldn't actually feel, even myself after, you know, whatever, almost 20 years of, of drawing uh, in this manner, I wouldn't feel totally confident actually that my shapes were perfect enough to simply render them out without kind of leaving myself the, the room to make kind of small changes, right? So we've zoomed forward about an hour. This is a whole hour that I've kind of extracted from the, uh, the process. We've zoomed forward. And what we're seeing now uh, is the, the values getting stretched even further. And if you go back to actually before we zoomed forward that hour and look at what it is now, what you're going to see in general is that with the darkening of the shadow comes the darkening of the halftones. They're almost expanding outward from the shadows uh, as we start to, to kind of feel the overall darkness of those shadows kind of increase. Uh, and that is something that, you know, you need to kind of budget out your, your attention and your focus and your time towards. Uh, so learning when it's appropriate to, to kind of push forward is a little bit by feeling, but it's also by kind of testing your values through squinting, right? So we squint down. Um, we, <laughs> by the way, it's, it's so Pavlovian by this point for me that as soon as I think values and value assignment and value assessment, I squint down. So I'm just squinting down now and, and watching the video along with you uh, and just looking at the, the kind of overall statement of values as they are. Uh, so as soon as I start thinking about that, it's a natural reaction. So bear this in mind that, that squinting down is your new shadow, right? It is the thing that, that, that is next to you all the time. Uh, anytime you're kind of uh, assessing and, and assimilating information about the status of your drawing, it's about squinting down, taking a look at, at how things are developing. So this is where we're actually at with a cast right now. You can see these areas that I'm talking about here. Notice, by the way, that I'm developing these areas as they kind of extend outward towards, uh, towards the lightest plane, right? So we have these uh, kind of darker shadows here that, of course, I kind of, I'm associating to the darkness of value that I'm using inside the shadow. Out here, I still have a more kind of just structural block-in uh, of where those shapes are. I haven't started to indicate those really kind of tight and small shadows there. Part of this is probably just a practical thing that, that next to the darkest darks and the darkest shadows, it makes sense to kind of implement shapes like this a little bit sooner. Uh, and as we get closer to the lights, uh, you know, 
venturing outward and kind of making crisp, dark shapes inside those those much lighter areas uh, feels a little bit more unsafe. <laughs> but also that the values around it aren't developed uh, to the extent that they're kind of justifying them. What we have, of course, over here is a lot of really dark halftone. And the dark halftone kind of encapsulates these uh, these kind of darker shadow edges and kind of bonds them together uh, in a transitional sense with the forms that are around them. We have flashed forward several times throughout the stream, and now we're really in the, the last moments uh, that I've taken on the drawing. And you can see really the practice is essentially the same throughout the entire kind of basically five hour block that I've allotted for this section of the drawing. Now we've expressed that five hour block in about 60 minutes. So necessarily there's a lot of things that we're leaving out. But you can understand that really your approach doesn't necessarily change you're kind of just doing what the values justify. And that has to do with keying the drawing. So when you're choosing your darkest dark, right, I talked about that dark accent just uh, on the eyeball itself, just below the upper eyelid, right? Once I establish what that darkest dark is, in a sense, it echoes out in necessity to all the other values around it. I can only put as much value into the lights as I have justified with my darkest dark by comparison. Remember the value scale where the darkest dark sits in relationship to where the uh, the lightest values are and that distance in between the two that is the relationship that we have to hold on to in order to maintain a sense of contrast in the drawing throughout that process hasn't changed i've simply taken the darkest dark and, and at each stage darkened it a little bit more evened out the technique a little bit more and then echoed out those changes throughout the rest of the values if anything the story of what we're doing now uh, is the story of how technique is necessary in keying a drawing, right? With a bad technique, or let's say with a, a grainy technique, you're unlikely to achieve the level of kind of unity in the values to properly or appropriately differentiate between the values in your, in your darks and lights. Also bear in mind that what kind of lead you're using in your pencils is gonna make a huge impact on what you're able to achieve here, right? If I tried to take my 4B and model the forms in the lightest areas of the cast, what I would wind up doing probably is actually getting into my stump and getting into all sorts of manipulations and rubbing. And when you're doing those things, remember, remember what's happening, right? When you're switching to a stump, when you're trying to render something really finely, right? Think about the point of your pencil and how specific you can be with that. And then look at the point of your stump, of your paper stump, right? It's easily, you know, uh, a dozen times larger, softer, more clumsy, right, than, than what the tip of your pencil is. So you're, you're kind of sacrificing a lot of shape design, a lot of clarity in your shape design when you switch to uh, an instrument for manipulation to kind of achieve values in the lights. So remember, switching to your 2H, switching to your 4H, this is how we get to rendering those nice even values and those nice even kind of gradations inside the light shape, uh, the same way that we would switch our tools to kind of work inside the shadows uh, and make sure we had like a nice clear kind of appreciation of how dark those areas were going to be as well, how smooth they were going to be also. So another thing to consider is, in a way, when you're talking about dark halftones, we talk a lot about halftone shapes. And this can be, in a sense, maybe difficult to understand because typically when we think of a shape, we think of something like, uh, like this, something with kind of clear boundaries. But that really doesn't jive with what an area like this like, actually looks like, right? So, so this is actually filled with halftone shapes. Uh, in a way, they are they can be slightly discrete from each other. As I start to kind of outline this one here, you can actually see where the value inside that differentiates itself from the, the value that's immediately next to it. Uh, absent of that outline, it just seems to be a kind of nebulous area that, that is a little bit darker. So how do we recognize that as a shape? It's a little bit of an exercise in mind over matter, meaning that while I understand I cannot outline the shape such as it is, uh, I have to create the shape uh, because that is how uh, I indicate a plane shift, uh, but I need to do so with kind of softer edges. So in a way, I am escaping a little bit the flatness of the paper, which, you know, flatness of paper and flatness of shapes kind of go hand in hand together. Uh, and I'm trying to uh, my best to kind of mimic the characteristics that I understand exist within the light shape. That's partly 
That's partly something you do uh, by looking at context. So searching for where, say, the sharpest edge in the composition is uh, and comparing that to the kinds of edges that you're going to be indicating in an area like this, you can see that there's really no competition in between the two, uh, just in the same way that uh, searching for like what the darkest value inside the entire composition is uh, and comparing you know other values to, to it like this, we can understand that also there's no competition in between the two. So understand the context of the uh, of the shapes and the edges that you're trying to to indicate uh, that would be the best way to uh, make sure that you don't wind up drawing shapes a little bit too sharp around their edges um i think we can just uh let's take the stream there um thank you so much and take good care of yourselves okay